Hi, my name is David Birgekot. I'm a game designer and Unity programmer. I've been working in the CRI in Paris on a scientific learning game project for the MIT's Game Lab. The goal of my internship was to create a proof of concept, a prototype of a game that could be used to teach biology concepts, like DNA or evolution, before entering the first year of college. I've been working on this prototype for about six weeks. The game is a simulation of independent digital creatures. Their shape, abilities and behavior is emergent from their DNA. The creatures need energy to survive. When their energy level gets below zero, they die. When it gets over 2000, they split into two creatures and their DNA is slightly mutated. When two pretty similar creatures that have a lot of energy touch each other, they reproduce sexually, leading to four new creatures. The DNA of the parents is then mixed together, mutated, and some of the children can even gain or lose some genes, like it happens in nature. This leads to new species of creatures with more or less modules, and this can lead to creatures that are more or less adapted for survival. There is some Darwinian evolution going on. The player can move the camera, zoom, select creatures, and move creatures. The left panel is used to spawn new creatures from three templates. A two-module, very simple creature. A four-module creature with a toxic sensing module and legs that are connected to this toxic sensing module. And a four-module creature with a creature sensing module and spikes that are connected to this creature sensing module. The right panel is used to spawn objects like food sources, obstacle and toxic cloud. The player can then move these objects to create his own level. As you can see, the player can also move the creatures with a simple drag and drop mechanic. He can also select creatures. When doing so, the camera will follow the creature and a new UI will appear, telling the player the creature's energy level. There are also new buttons to mutate the creature, duplicate the creature, kill the creature, or uh, show its DNA. When showing the DNA, the player can copy it to try to understand it or modify it. Let's modify the DNA a bit. The player can use the DNA editor to spawn new creatures with custom DNA. Let's modify it a bit and then spawn it. At the top of the screen is a time bar. It represents the speed of the simulation. When the auto box is checked, the speed will auto-correct to never go under 20 frames a second. We can also uncheck it and directly play with the speed. The pause button stops all the creatures, but not the game, so the player can prepare challenges for its creatures, move them or organize its sandbox space before waking up the creatures. So, how does it work? Each creature module is made of 11 ATCJ base pairs. The last four are used to determine what type of module it will be, and the first eight are parameters that are used to add more complexity and possibilities. There are two main types of modules, sensors that are triggered by some objects and then send information to any actuator that is listening to the sensor. The other type of module is the actuator. It does things like moving or extending spikes, but only when its connected sensor is triggered. For example, a leg module can be listening to a food sensor. When the food sensor senses food, it will tell the leg to start moving. This can create complex emergent behavior without needing brains or neural networks. Thanks for watching and see you next time.